Hello and welcome to the video game book club slash video game AV club because we are kind of doing both. We're combo. Yeah. So we read the Uncharted, uh, the official movie novelization. By S.D. Perry. <laughs> and then, and then we, we watched also the watched the movie. Yeah. Yes. Because this was the movie novelization. You get it. You're smart. Yes. So we read the book, then we watched the movie, and the book was on the movie. So we are going to talk about the, the differences, movie, and... the difference in the book, and then the difference in the game. Yeah, so I actually read the book before watching the movie. Well, you listened to the book. I did, and it's narrated by Nolan North. You remembered his name. Okay, I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> Nolan North, who is the <laughs> voice of Nathan Drake in the Naughty Dog uh, Uncharted series. So. Yeah, I couldn't remember. And we were talking about him the whole movie, and I was like, who's He's that guy? In the movie. I want to see Nathan Fillion so bad. <laughs> uh, Nathan Fillion, the true Nathan Drake. <laughs> but I, you know, it's Nolan North. All right, so the novelization is written um, by S.G. Perry. S.G. Perry is a familiar name to our book club. She's the one that wrote the Resident Evil Resident Evil series. She's written some other, I think, Star Trek. Uh, a lot of stuff. Um, she's a she's good busy. writer. She's a great writer. Uh, this is actually based on... Probably one of our faves. Yeah, so it's based <laughs> on the screenplay uh, by Rafe Jenkins, Art uh, Markham, and Matt Holloway. Um, Rafe, Rafe is actually a writer on the Wheel of Time cool. series, as right. well as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Art and Matt were both uh, writers for Iron Man. Movie. Wait, this guy's named Rafe, and that other guy's name's Art? Yes. Ooh. Ho oh, ho! Fancy! Fancy. The director of the Uncharted film is Ruben Fleischer. I Sorry, I don't have the list up. Let's um, he directed Zombieland. He also directed Venom and uh, Gangster Squad. So we have some. I don't know what that movie is. We have some Marvel ties. I guess fake. director of yeah, I've seen actually Gangster all of Squad. Come yeah, on, that's not a real Squad. movie. It is. That sounds like a fake movie in a game. <laughs> mm, no, it's a real movie. I've seen it. Um, so we have we have a lot of Marvel tie-ins because we have the director of Venom, then we have the writers of Iron Man, and then we have Spider-Man himself playing Spider our himself. title role. Tom Holland, it's got Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch Wahlberg. We have Antonio Banderas, whose name is just so fun to say. Um, Sophie Ali, uh, Sophia Ali plays Chloe. Um, she did an excellent job on the wilds if you have not seen that on amazon it's fantastic she's great dang you watch a lot of stuff not nah. <laughs> not as much as some people you know like i don't know half the stuff you're saying <laughs> mm -hmm. and then uh tati gabriel is i'm gonna say our villain she's our antagonist joe braddock she is joe braddock so um that is our main cast there are some other characters as well but um we don't need to go into that. Uh, it came out in 2022, so it came out recently. Oh, it was 22? 22. I was 21. Very beginning of 22. Oh, um, the beginning. That's basically 21. It's about an hour and 56 minutes. There are some uh, after credit or mid credit scene, no after credits. Um, it did okay. Actually did pretty well for a video game movie not a lot of movies were coming out at that time though well uh, i mean it was a big marvel year and then avatar just came out and that did better than this. well it was 20... sonic 2 also did better than this movie that movie we'll talk about that later <laughs> so it made about 140 million dollars in uh, u.s and canada and 400 and a little over 400 million worldwide it is the 13th highest earning film of 2022 oh the uh, synopsis of the movie on IMDb, the short, short one, is street smart Nathan Drake is recruited by seasoned treasure hunter Victor Sully Sullivan to recover a fortune amassed by Ferdinand Magellan and lost 500 years ago by the House of Moncada. And uh, it is still on Netflix. So if you have not seen Uncharted, would we recommend taking a glance? Um, Sure. I think it's a good I, I, video game adaptation. It is not true to the to the game. But I we'll I that. actually would prefer the the book. I think the book is better than this. Movie. The book was was but well if written. you are uh, you don't want to read a book, which I totally get. Uh, yeah, you watch movies. The <laughs> book itself was a little bit longer than some of the other books. 
I mean, I read it in less than a week, like like normal. <laughs> I mean, I also might be biased because like it's the I read the book before watching the movie. There's more to the book, so it gives you more information. Definitely a bias because you know you know how these book people are where they're like, ew, the book is so much better, but movies got to be quick, so like I get it. So you got to cut stuff out. I usually watch things before I read the book material because again the book is usually better i actually saw the movie when it came out in theaters and um i had some issues with the movie as a game as a game fan because they do change the lore of the the game but um yeah but it's being like a different thing it is and that was your problem with tomb raider was that it was too close to the same thing well they take i mean they took direct shots from the game in tomb raider and in uh, uncharted it starts with a scene from the well, third yeah, uncharted game that but. makes sense homage but it's like when it's shot for shot, but then they don't do as good of a game. You don't want it to be exactly like the thing. No, because then in the Tomb Raider, the issue I had with the the newest Tomb Raider um, movie was that they combined the first and second of the remake games into one, but then they didn't do a great job telling the story. Whereas like this was an actual story from beginning to middle and like you got what was going on you didn't know need to know background information but they changed the lore of like how neat meets sully and um the book i think we both gave it gave four, it four stars it does a better job at explaining things and it gives internal dialogue of um it's our characters. always nice so, um so um yeah sd perry did a great job it's about 400 pages and i think you said the audiobook was Eight, eight hours long ish hours yeah so not uh it is pretty a, short chapters there was one yes. chonky 40 minute chapter yeah but at all the, the beginning rest of them. who can i complain about audible for a second yeah i hate that audible uh they don't have like an epilogue or a prologue thing like mentioned on there in the chapter no, so one? yeah they'll just say chapter one even though it's the prologue oh um so i had to always write down like one behind Ooh. the chapter because they don't have that it's annoying, and I don't like it. I think I might just buy my audiobooks on Spotify from now on. Mm. Um, any book that I get on, like, Libby, I think that gives the prologue and epilogue and stuff like yeah. that. So. I've had enough, Audible. I'm done. <laughs> Fix your shit. I'm just going to go somewhere else now. And right. It's so minute. It's so it's such a minor thing. Like, but, I can't believe I had to go, and it said prologue when it said chapter one on... But it's not really the prologue. It's not... I mean, it's not really chapter one. It's, it's not, not really chapter, chapter one. 30, whatever. Because it'll be like, oh, I started. And it's like, oh, you're on chapter 17. Actually, I'm not. I'm on chapter 16, but thanks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Audible. So are we, you ready to dive in? No. Book versus movie versus game. What's the What game is this oh. one based on? So this, I think I told you this is like a bastardization of, of the third and the fourth and game. Three. Yeah. But uh, it is a new, we don't get into Magellan in the series. So Magellan, the treasure hunting with Magellan is similar to the Drake mm-hmm. and the Henry Avery, which is the fourth game. So the crate at the beginning, that is from, that is directly from the third game. Oh, those were two. No, that the two is the train. It's the same thing. Where they revisit. So in the second game, he's like bleeding on a train and then you have to climb all the way up. Oh. And then you get back there again, which is kind of what they do in this one. Mm -hmm. But in the third game, you fall out of the cargo plane and are attached to the boxes, like in this game, or in this movie. So, I mean, I'm a huge Uncharted fan. You are not a fan of Uncharted. So, you liked the book. I'm shaking my head. You can't see me. (laughs) Um, You liked Tom Holland's... Oh, yeah. I have Nate Drake, uh, game versus book versus previous book yeah the previous book i felt like was not very we good we read at what was it called the fourth the fourth the labyrinth labyrinth i think it was called the fourth labyrinth i think i'm sure we have it here something like that <laughs> um the forgotten labyrinth because yeah, we forgot that what? was my least favorite version of nathan drake that yeah that i felt like that was, was not weird. he was creepy well and written was, for uh, the character of, of me I didn't like him uh i don't like nate drake in the games uh, and I did actually... I find him to be very funny and a little bit enduring, although... Enduring? Well, he breaks everything and keeps going. Oh. <laughs> enduring, I think. is. Oh, enduring. Okay, yeah. like, enduring. He's got that endurance. He does. He keeps going. Like, he doesn't give up. 
like, well, that'd be a really boring game if he was like, you know what? <laughs> Every, but even I'm like leaving. towards the end, he's just like, everything I touch turns to shit. You're just going to play Crash Bandicoot now. I quit. <laughs> I'm done playing this. He's got his issues, but I think that's important for a protagonist is that they're guess, not. But his issues are too big for yeah. me to look past because I'm like, you're just a shithead. <laughs> mm. He tries. Yeah, I guess, but not well enough. He could be Sully. <laughs> Sully does suck. And it really shows in this book. I mean, honestly, this Nate sucks, too. Like, he's not a great guy. Nate Drake is a dirty little thief boy. Sleazeball. Always poor. Always stinky. <laughs> he is always poor because he always... He, at the end, he always ends up tra- having to do the, the, the right, right thing, thing. Which is to lose the gold. Even though he was treasure. doing, like, the wrong thing the yeah. whole time. He never changes. So, I don't know. I liked this Drake better. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know why I liked this guy better. You didn't break everything you touched. I just think he just did it for the funsies instead of for the mun- munsies. <laughs> the monies. <laughs> that was in the book. Um, we'll, I'm, we'll talk about it as we go chapter by chapter. But his motivation for sticking in the game and going after this fortune changes. And they... I didn't really see a clear change. I know you did when you said we find out about Sam, but at first it was very much about the money and how I he had it was. these dreams. Because in the book, he's like, F, F, F my brother, F Sully. Like, yeah, but he kept his brother's stuff. He may say F my brother for leaving me, but he still kept all of his belongings and all of his stuff right. and he still looks at him fondly. He cares. He's just being a dude about it. But, yeah, I don't like Sam Drake. I think he is not. He is definitely a villain in the game for sure. He's like not really in this story very no, really. much at all. They made him look a lot better, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, in the is. in four, you see the young Sam, and like young Sam, I feel like is a good guy, but then older Sam sucks. I think the reason I liked this Nate is because everyone else sucks. More. <laughs> More. It's hard to like anybody in this uh, movie slash book, honestly. Like, who else are you supposed to root for? And honestly, uh, when Nate loses, it's like, probably for the best, yeah. to be honest with you. So it's kind of hard to root for him when you're like, I hope he doesn't get the gold in the end <laughs> because he doesn't deserve it. Neither does Sully, neither does Chloe, neither does Moncada. And uh, um, so I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Just watch this stuff fall apart and then be like, oh, yeah, it's what you deserve. Mm-hmm. You dirty little freaks. <laughs> anyway, let's get in. To the, let's jump. Okay, so I'm going to read the back of the book before we jump into our prologue. Uh, Nathan Drake has always been obsessed with treasure and with the places out there that you can't find on any map. They aren't gone, just lost. When Victor Sully Sullivan approaches Nate with a clue that could lead them to, quote, the greatest treasure never found, the two embark on an epic adventure that spans the globe. Together, they must track down the missing fortune and possibly find Nate's long lost brother along the way. Which Possibly. very uncharted that we have three sets. We ha- we're in New York, and then we're in Spain, and then we're in Indonesia. So that was that that goes with the game where you have at least three. Yeah, the other book, can. the other book had that too. That is true. All right, so we're gonna jump into the novelization. We're gonna go chapter by chapter, and we'll talk about the differences in the movie and the game as well as we go. So yep. be ready to be spoiled. All right, prologue. Prologue. Or chapter one if you're audible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is, uh, you see a ring in the air waving around like it just don't care. Oh, in the movie? Yeah. All I just have is him hanging upside down in the back of That's the car. That's the prologue. It's the, the Sam's ring. So you start with the ring. Sam's ring. Um, Nate wakes up with the wind hitting him and he's in the air attached to a cargo. By his foot. And that is very Uncharted 3. I also wrote down the quote, nothing like core strength to fight wind shear. Yeah, he was passed out. Do your crunches, kid. And uh, he's just attached by his leg. Mm-hmm. So 
I, there's no way, but whatever. It's uncharted. You, you got to pull okay. himself up. It's kind of like the James Bond cool. effect where you're like, I'm going to shake it off. It doesn't have mm-hmm. to be realistic. It's fine. Uh, Nate's going to work his way up the crates. He's going to be shot at. Uh, there's a guy, he calls him Beardo, and he grabs his leg and then he like kicks him off. He's like, sorry. Yeah, oops, my bad. Uh, sorry, you're trying to shoot me. <laughs> so I just kind of killed you. Oops, my bad. Oops. It was in the movie. He's like, oh, it's just a reaction. Sorry, guy. Uh, he makes it. But then there is a red 1955 Mercedes Gullwing that takes him out of the plane. Yeah, just hits him. And then we move on to chapter one. Do-do-do. Boston, 11 years ago. So in the movie, it said 15 years ago. Okay. So we're already having some discrepancies. Nate in the first game and as well in this book, he's supposed to be about 23 in the beginning of So he's about 12. Yeah, it says in the book he's 12. Yeah. And Sam is 18. And um, there is a little back and forth in the book about what his age is later on. He's like, oh, he's barely 21. But he's like, he's 23. And in the first game, he's 23 as well. So that kind of, that fits a little bit. Okay. Um, so Sam made the jump look easy. They're breaking into a museum. Nate's 12 and he likes bubble yum. Yes. That's all you need to know. They jump from a tree to a window. Nate almost fell. This is very Uncharted 4. Uh, Sam saved him. And now, yeah, they're sneaking through the museum. They're Sir Francis Drake's descendants is what they said. Which their parents say, but... Oh, whatever, every parent lies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the world was old and full of interesting things, valuable things. So we're at the McEwen Museum, and he's like, we gotta go to the Age of Explorers exhibit. Dang, you're going in depth. I just wrote he's trying to steal the first map ever made, and then I got busted. Uh, then we get the background that Magellan never made it around the world. That's what we're all told in, like... What sixth grade, fifth grade, I don't know. whatever I've never grade that heard is? Magellan in my life. Really, it's yep. the age of exploration. I've definitely school has failed me. Mm. But he did not <laughs> actually make it around the world because he dies. He's actually killed in the Philippines, and his uh, captain. Is that what his they call captain? Him? Yeah, they just call him the captain. Uh, he's the one that actually finishes the him and seventeen others. So they call him the Great Eighteen. So what? Getting halfway is not enough. <laughs> no. But Magellan, oh, Magellan has a cooler a name, name, so he's the one that's known for making it around the world. And they're looking at this map, um, and they're looking for gold. And this is where we get the quote that is uh, said again and again what? in the movie. It's, if something's lost, it can be found. Yeah, okay. Anyway, they get busted. <laughs> they get busted. Sam was trying to, like, cut out the map with a knife. Yeah, and of course it. there's a alarm and the guards are there like lickety split so sam is gonna get sent to reform school reform school so he's a month shy of 18 they're orphans they yeah, live at saint francis's orphanage they don't say in the movie that he's being sent to reform school he's definitely being sent to prison yeah they broke into a museum and he's 18 which i don't think you had a reform 18 you're an adult yeah so you're going to jail also they I don't, don't think go to i think you can try as an adult as 18 right yeah yeah, so, yeah, he's going to jail. He's going to jail. And he's like, nope, sorry, I'm not. Yeah, they say, go upstairs, Sam. Go get your stuff. Uh, I'm like, this he... is not how any of this works, by the Flips way. Flips out, yeah. Before they had a chance to, like, they're going to bring his stuff to jail. Yeah. <laughs> well, You're... it's reform school. It's reform school, so it's okay. <laughs> For a month before he gets kicked out. But yes. Sam sneaks out, and he leaves Nate a note, as well as his ring, which says, Sick Parvis Magnus. It's the Uncharted ring great uh greatness from small beginnings he leaves his lighter and a secret message written in invisible ink so he's got to use the lighter to hit heat the paper and then the ink appears which will become important later never forget your drake and a promise to come back for him which he never fulfills that promise he doesn't even say it in the in the movie it just says i love you yeah Never forget your drink. Well, he does. I think in the postcards. Maybe he said it 
in the dialogue and I just missed it. Yeah, well, I think Nathan Before he Nate snuck says out it. the window. New York City! Ten days ago. Nate now works at a bar. He's Trying got a bartender guy. All hustle American to bro. get to the bar. The bar is called the Slaughterhouse, which I'm not gonna... I wouldn't want to go to a bar called the Slaughterhouse. Uh, he makes different drinks for people and describes their jewelry to steal. So he's basically sizing up his marks. He steals rich people's jewelry. Mm-hmm. And I know that's a that's a dick move. I don't care if they're rich and you hate them. And they're also don't steal it while you're at work because that's that's like, super bad. It's the bartender. Like in the movie, he stole it like right in front of the bar. Oh, he takes the bracelet off of her wrist where he try- he's trying to light. A- yeah. Because the lighter, the lighter that Sam left him now no longer works, like, at all. Yeah. So and he uses it as a distraction to steal things from people. He and in the like book, an- I'm pretty sure they are in, like, an alleyway. Yeah. So that makes... Because it's, like, behind the bar you alleyway. You can't smoke right in front of the bar. So, yeah. And so he's just... It makes sense to steal it in the back alley where nobody can see. But in the front of the... Everyone's going to see you. There's windows. Yeah. And he's also, like, oh, I'm on my break. Yeah. Also, when she's she wants a vodka tonic and he's like oh toast me it's she's my, like it's my first drink of the night first drink of the night she's like okay how about a negroni and i'm like negroni is not that difficult to make she probably couldn't think of another thing yeah. and also she was looking through the thing in the book she like grabbed the little pamphlet of the drinks mm-hmm. and just picked something and then we get the history of the she negroni. wanted a vodka tonic like give her it <laughs> yeah it's the also vodka tonics like the lowest calorie my drink god there. dude um then a young uh a guy walks into a the bar with a in a tuxedo right and a tom ford tuxedo oh, there's no, a I lot just... of like product placement in this book just like dead island yeah so we have a tom ford tuxedo we're eating some bubble yum like not just bubble gum and the car has the a mercedes going yeah <laughs> and well, we have a hyundai later on and it's very very product placing um they so this guy walks in in a tuxedo he's in his mid to late 40s i just put some old man in my notes yeah so. do you think marky mark Wahlberg looks like he's in his mid to late 40s he looks pretty good actually for his age with the uh the deep frown lines yeah mm. he looks like he's been frowning constantly <laughs> <laughs> And this is where we get the line, you're a little young for a bartender, and he's like, aren't you too old for the prom or something like that? Yes. Which was in the trailer, but is not in the actual movie. That's funny. Yeah. So maybe S.D. Perry watched an early cut. Well, she had the the script script. that she worked off of. Because you don't see Sully in the movie until, like, the bar's closing. Yeah. So the, he comes in early in the book and he orders some Hemingway drink. It's a da- Hemingway daiquiri, which is very, like, bragged, heavy on the alcohol. <laughs> bragged that he went to that Hemingway bar in Cuba or mm-hmm. whatever. And Nate's the like, Florida. oh, man, I want to go to that. Sad. And then uh, and then the guy just dipped. Mm-hmm. And then he sees. Oh, he leaves his money clip on the bar. To see if he'll steal it. And then Nate gives it back to him. Yep. Uh, but Nate does steal the pr- tennis bracelet from the Negroni girl. Negroni girl. <laughs> um, it's better than the vodka tonic lady. Negroni girl sounds good. The vodka cool, tonic though. tart. <laughs> and then um, Sully comes back into the bar. Sully's been watching him, and he he's like, "Hey, I have a job for you." And Nate's like, "Get out of here! <laughs> Leave! <laughs> what are you? What You're are you freak. doing?" So, it's like, what, you just been watching me steal baubles from people? Yeah, because he's like, I see I see your game, kid. I've been in here a couple times. And you didn't steal my money clip, so yeah. you're obviously sizing people up. <laughs> and uh... Could I take you in a fight? <laughs> I only steal from women, man. <laughs> I'm naked. Drunk Drake. ladies. I only steal from the rich women in my bar. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Sully ends up taking the tennis bracelet, steals it, he loves it, and leaves his business card with the thou shall not steal uh nate's like fuck that guy i'm breaking into his apartment so he uh steals the guard's keys he runs into him while he's trying to be a millennial on his phone and ends up going in so he went to his apartment um that's and wrote- sully is also there <laughs> sully's got all this like artifacts all over the place and he's got all these books and i was like 
my notes sully reads <laughs> question sully mark read. it's just he doesn't read. nate has to tell him everything in the game so and in yeah. the movie he's not that well no uh, he doesn't know he doesn't know anything yeah he doesn't know anything sully's so useless um there are books about missing treasures uh there's the amber room which is actually a steve barry book which i've read it's pretty good um steve barry is a historical fiction um i've never heard of that man in my life yeah so sully's in there he caught him yes in the apartment but we also get there is our like first easter egg thing which is there's a book on magellan and it's written by amy henning which she is the there's also an easter egg in the bar in the movie that isn't in it's the book. not in the book that's right there's a slide up sign that said kitty got wet it's a multiplayer uncharted reference yeah. i think it was like nolan north's kid said it or something like that that was where the secret behind that when he's playing the multiplayer because it's only when you're in the water mm. well you do play marco polo all the time yeah but that's later yep um which I, there wasn't a marco polo reference and i was a little sad yeah. <laughs> I have to look at the outtakes. Um, Sully is watching him case the joint. Um, Nate's like putting stuff in his back. <laughs> he finds the tennis bracelet, but he's really looking at a map. It's the same map. It's the Magellan map from the beginning of the movie. Yep. Okay, so Sully is like, oh yeah, I was watching you in here and I also made you a drink. And in the movie, he just looks at it and is like, a Shirley Temple, very funny. But in the book, he actually takes a sip, which makes sense. Because if I just see a red thing with cherries in it, it could be a lot of drinks. I'm gonna assume. Come on, come on. There wasn't even like all of the sprite mm -hmm. <laughs> and stuff. It was just a drink. Whatever. Whatever movie. Whatever. I don't even have to tell me. They, they got to move fast. Yeah. Um. So the map's a test because it's like right on the middle. Uh, Magellan. They have, keep, they have to keep Tom Holland dehydrated. Yes. So that he can look buff. Because <laughs> he definitely takes his shirt off a couple times. Uh. There. So, oh, Magellan was not out there to um, circumnavigate the world. He was really out there to find gold. He died in the Philippines, uh, and it was backed by the House of Mankata. And they're now looking for $5 billion in gold, and it's the biggest treasure that's never been found. And he casually drops Sam's name. Yeah, apparently uh, they were friends. He shows we're a photo practically of friends. Practically. We which means you're not friends at all. We're but then, acquaintances. I, in the Here's movie, a photo of us yeah. hanging out. And then the movies, uh, I don't know, I don't remember if it was the same in the book, but um, Nate's like, oh, he has a beard now. Because he hasn't seen his brother in now, like, a lot, 15, 11 years. Yeah. He just gets random postcards every once in a while with, like, a sentence on it. I wouldn't even know what he looked like. To be honest. No, it didn't. I it kind of no didn't even way. look like the same You could guy. show a photo of anybody and he'd probably be like, oh my gosh, my brother. Oh, that's my brother. It's <laughs> yeah, been it's over a decade before. Like, he hasn't seen him. So he says Sam ghosted him. Um, and he kind of puts the, like, if we find the gold, we'll find Sam. And Sam left when, um, he says, oh, Sam left when I was 10. But then. This is where I get the differences in the age, but I'm like, in the book, it says he's 12. Oh, he but he's like, know. Sam left when I was 10, but I'm like... You think he remembers, though? He probably Nate? just picked a number. Nate's I'm... definitely gonna remember. No, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, because you know when you did something as a kid? Do you remember when you were 10 versus 12? I think I would remember it when you no, lost your brother. Not the exact age. I'd just be like, I was young. I was around the age of, like, my tweens. Yeah, I don't freaking remember. Okay, fine. You give the you can say no and say that Nate has the best memory in the world because he remembers all of this history garbage. Yeah. So, okay. I think it was just uh, they weren't quite Oop, sure you guys how old up. they wanted to make him. Screenwriters. Terrible. Because really, they wanted him to be like twenty one, but then they made him twenty three, and they're like, "Well, let's play, let's play with him being twenty one versus twenty three. I still don't think there's much of a difference, but I guess the. In the, in I remember the differences when I, I was 21 versus 23. Is in college regardless. Yeah. It all kind of blurs together. And then Nate says, the Sam I knew disappeared a long time ago. And then he leaves and he's like, F that guy. F Sam. Wasn't I'm going home. With Sam, yeah. Because he's been like abandoned by his brother. He looks through all the stuff Sam gives him. And uh, Sully was honestly shocked that Nate turned him down. He's like, I actually didn't expect mm -hmm. this super weird um so nate's looking at the postcards there's an easter egg in the movie that's not in the book which is in, when he's looking through the 
his case of lost th or forgotten things. There's a Naughty Dog sticker and a Supreme sticker, which was weird. But product placement. Sure. He takes out the Nathan Drake necklace, which is the Drake ring. Promises broken. He calls Sully and asks, uh, was the captain's journal there? And where do we start? Yep, so he's in now. And this leads us to chapter three. They're meeting up. Uh, Nate, it's still like four o'clock in the morning or whatever it was. Nate grabs some pizza. Breakfast of champions. Oh no, it's New York. Yeah. <laughs> so. There's an auction. There's the cross of the brotherhood. Nate's like, I don't really, I guess that's what that translates to. I got a C in Spanish. So I can't read. Oh, they actually did say key in the book. Wasn't just it's cross. not a cross with the key. It says Sully wants Nate to steal a key to the treasure. The second key uh, Sully has is the captain's key, which we'll find out later he actually doesn't have. Um, Nate needs to kill the power during an auction for which the first is key. very uncharted for. And then Nate did his research, uh, and he they're going to the Augustine, and he's mapping everything out. Nate shares only ten percent. Yeah, and he's totally chill with that. He's like, that's still a lot of money. Yeah, 10% of, what, $4 billion? Which makes me feel like he didn't really care about the money at all. Yeah. It's an adventure. It's He wants yeah. to travel and get he out there. He wants to travel. So he's like, let me get I'll out of here. He'll take any excuse. Um, plot, the next it's five like days. It's like an EF tour, but you have to commit a crime <laughs> while you're in the, the foreign country. No, don't ever commit a crime in a foreign country. There's Locked Up and Abroad, and that show is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so five, the next five days are a blur. Nate's like doing his homework. He's like working out. Um, ropes. Yeah. He's, he's like, what if I need to be buff for this auction? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's uh, walking and casing the joint. He's doing intel. Uh, and <laughs> then he's like, I'm going to need some things. So he's like, you got it. He no, needs need a nice suit. I need a Handheld tux. sheet metal cutters. And a cat. And a cat. And uh, in the book, it's like Sully's little like bubble shows up, like he's typing, and he types forever, and then eventually it goes away, and it comes up with okay, <laughs> okay. And the cat's downstairs. Like we don't, we don't. I don't think we see the cat. And he's like, "Where'd you get the cat?" And he's like, "The cat's for you." Yeah. Um. And in the movie, that cat's a freaking expensive cat. Sully went all out. Yeah. He thought that the cat was a distraction. Sully. Honestly, Nate did too for a little bit. And mm -hmm. he thought about it. He's like, nope, Sully can keep it. I'm just going to be a You group. seem like a lonely guy. It's going to be my one joke. The Of course, Nate does background on Sully. Finds out Sully was dishonorably discharged from the Navy because he was looting in Iraq. Typical Sully. Mm. He was a pilot. A terrible guy through and through. Uh. And then I'm on chapter four. How about you? Yep, I'm on chapter four. Uh, we have bubble yum, which will come up several times. And I said, question mark, not a gum for adults. But You've apparently... been saying bubble. You're so mad about this <laughs> bubble yum thing. What's your beef with bubble yum? It looks like when you chew bubble yum, it's so large that you look you like a cow. You see it in the movie. Yes. He looks like a cow. And the flavor lasts all he of uses... like 10 minutes. He uses the bubble yum to get through a door. Do you think any other bubble yes, but then gum? He continues to chew it afterwards. Do you think any other bubble gum can get that door? It's a fat thing of gum. It has mm -hmm. to be bubble yum or bubblelicious, which they do bring up in the movie also. It can't be some dimpy zebra oral <laughs> bee. The I'm zebra. defending the bubble yum because it's huge and it's perfect for committing crimes with. Ugh, that's not definitely not for chewing. And Nate just picking up the gum and continuing eating it after using it Ugh. in the door is super funny because he's such a gross little stinky man. And then later when they're in the ocean, he like waits for it to dry out so he can chew it again. That thing's definitely encrusted. He does it. People. Well, in the book, it, they explain that he does it when he's nervous, yeah. which kind of makes sense. That seems like a good thing to do. Chew and go when you're nervous. Something to do. Yeah. It's what his brother taught him, <laughs> I think. Uh, we see Santiago Mancada, and he thinks the cross is his birth, but his by birthright, but he's at the auction to drop some, drop some dough. Yep. Uh, then we meet Joe Braddock. She's just a villain. She just... She is kind of a Nadine Ross knockoff. Yeah. I guess she's an assassin, so yeah. I wrote with a question mark. Um, she's, I guess, a, a mercenary yeah. assassin that the guy hired. And then her and Sully have a romantic history. Yeah, but in the movie, she's like, I don't know, the same age as Nate. Yeah. And he's like 40. Young. So it's kind of gross. Mm. Uh, 
Nate and Santiago Mancada end up talking, and Nate sounds like an idiot. Like, so cool. Look at this thing. Yeah. Uh, he uses his... So the auction's about to start. Nate has to go cut the power. He uses his gum to stop the door from locking so he can get back there. Um, there's no one watching any of the security stuff back. Joe's stage. watching, though. You go from Joe's uh, POV... He was watching Nate, and then mm-hmm. Nate's POV when he gets in and he takes the stairs up to the maintenance room. And she's like, she can see him. <laughs> Go get him, Scottish guy. Somehow the Scottish and the other guy can go up the stairs. MMA, yeah. Yeah, Nate will just call him Scottish guy and MMA. I don't think we actually learn their names. I think she calls them their names, but I think his name's Scotty. Yeah, <laughs> that's so lame. And so Nate's trying to cut the power. Uh, the auction's going on, and Nate is not having a easy time. I like also he, in the book they write with a Scottish accent, and it's hard to understand some of it. And uh, Nolan North does a really good Scottish accent. And even Nate's like, I don't understand what you're saying to me. <laughs> He's like, you're going to get the beating of your life. That's Irish, that's not Scottish, I apologize. <laughs> but uh, he's like, I don't know. What? What was that? Yeah. And he ends up getting in a fight. He gets in a fight and Sully's, you know, talking to him over the radio like, come on, dude, I'm in a bidding war and I'm using money I don't have. Yeah. Uh, they, Nate ends up not taking out the power, but he does cause a distraction when he's on the upper balcony and jumps off of it onto this hanging lighting structure. Yeah, another dude showed up and it scared him enough that he jumped on the... Uh, so the he's hanging on these like fluorescent light bulbs thing. and yeah. they're breaking and everyone looks up and so Sully does a switcheroo and he's like, hey, I'm here as a security to... Yeah, he has a... Uh, the inside out jacket. outfit mm. underneath. He switches to that. And he takes the cross while everyone else is attraction. And he's like, sorry, kid, I got what I came for. And he's just going to leave Nate there. Yeah, because Nate fell on the ground. And in the book, everyone's being nice. They're like, oh, are you okay? And they're <laughs> like, like, oh, you're in lot. trouble. Security wants to talk to him. Like, very nicely, though. They're not, yeah, he's they're like, very nice. He's like, well, you can talk to my lawyer because who built that? Really? I can't believe this. It's crazy. Uh, it's funnier in the movie. Because he's like talking to the guy while backing up and, and yelling, he, and then he just runs, runs away. Runs for it. But in the book, it's like he's talking to them, and he's like, "You're gonna hear from my lawyer." And then they all look somewhere else. Yeah, like they're... at the handrail. He's like, "Look at that handrail up there." <laughs> he just walks look, out, like he owns the place. Look over there, and then he just leaves. Uh, Joe Braddock runs into Sully, and she stops him. She's got a knife. She's got a thing with knives. She's got a thing with knives. And then security shows up, and he's like, "She's trying to steal this thing," and so. But he's like, good luck, boys. Yeah, good luck. And yeah. then uh, she kills all the security, and Sully's just like, I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he flips his jacket so he looks like a normal guy again and gets in a taxi. No, he gets in the car that he rented because Nate's already in the car because Sully was just going to leave him. Yeah. And, uh, and this is where Sully's like, oh, you made it. Yay. Yay. And Nate's like, can't believe you're just going to leave me there. Mm-hmm. And he's like, sorry, Sully, I'm all in. Chapter five. They're going on a plane. <laughs> uh, Sully's not flying this plane. Um, he knows a guy, Taglin, who's not mentioned in the movie at all. And they're going to go to Spain. Unnecessary information. Taglin sells things he probably shouldn't. And he's got a little fridge that's got a little little Ugh. bottles of booze. Because Sully's the, drinking them all. This is the problem with movies is that they only have a, such a sm- short amount of time to tell you stuff that they're leaving things out. I feel like they did the Indiana Jones thing where they're like, look, this plane is going from one oh, route yeah. to the other. Um, Nate is reading the translations of Elcano's journal. I said blasphemy because in the game, Nate knows how to read all these things because he's the history buff. So he can read Latin and Spanish and Italian and He's just looking stuff up on his phone. That's the thing I liked about the book is he's always just looking stuff up on his phone, which is, you know, a young kid thing to do. And also probably the, he's got great coverage. A smart kid thing to do. Uh, Somebody who doesn't have that much money, he's got great cell phone coverage. Just looks this way. He's been, he has a lot of money. You should see his apartment in the yeah, movie. His apartment in the movie is uh, He's also lifting people's diamond bracelets. Mm-hmm. He probably has bank. Um, you think all, with all that cash he's been lifting, he can travel. Yeah. But whatever. Out of five ships on Magellan's uh, route, only one made it back. 
he thinks that they brought the gold to Spain and told the Moncados that uh, the trip was a bust. So Moncados like fronted the money for all of this and they got mm. not on the end. Uh, then one by one, the 18 survivors started dying. The Victoria was the only ship that came back, which ends up becoming important because that's the boat that they rent at the end to go find the ships. Um, Elcano escapes Spain and he ends up dying of malnutrition in the mid Pacific. I got specific. You got real specific. The path begins in Barcelona where the keys turn into pine, which is the note in the journal. And Sully is texting back and forth with Chloe Frazier. They're going to meet up in Barcelona. They meet at the school art museum. Chloe's, uh... Chloe's got the other key. Yep. It's got the captain's key, I think? Yes. Yeah. So there's a description of her. She's wearing a dress, and she kind of looks pissed. <laughs> she didn't expect Nate to be there. She doesn't even know who this guy is. Mm-hmm. It's it. I thought it's kind of funny where she's like, who's this guy? And she's like, oh, he's like, well, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Um, Chloe tells him everything out of this man's mouth is an exaggeration, a half truth, or an outright lie. So she doesn't want to work with them, but she also stole their cross out of yes. his bag because she just kind of casually leaves, and then uh, they're like, "Where, where, where are you going?" He's where like, "Check your bag," <laughs> and she took the cross. And uh, once Nate starts to run, she breaks into a run, and they're running across, and then she gets into her Hyundai. <laughs> Her car looks scary in the yeah. movie. I did not expect it to look like that. Mm-hmm. It's like a big black, like military looking yeah. car. Nate thought... catches up with her and persuades her that he can help because he's like, I know where the tree is. Yeah, it's it's not the tree. There's no way it's a tree. It's a church thing. Yes. And she's like, okay, which church? Oh, okay, I'm in now. The cross is an altar crucifix. The tree is the church. If you want to get the gold, we're going to have to trust each other. Chloe hands over the cross, and they're going to Plaza del P, which is the same area of the time. And straight up, I think, talks to Nate about cutting Chloe out, because Nate yeah. can see that. And uh, Nate's unhappy about cutting Chloe out, because he's crushing. He's mm. straight crushing on her. Already. So, like, keeps reminder, like, don't do it. She's a dick. Don't do it. <laughs> Chapter six brings us to Mankato. Billionaire Mankato apologizes. He's joining the giving pledge where he's going to give all his money away. And his son's not happy about that. Nope, his son likes being rich. Mm-hmm. And he didn't he didn't tell his son that he was going to do that before. <laughs> well, he, he hates his son. Because yeah. his son comes and talks to him and he's like, I should have cut you out years ago. Yep. You're a little brat. So they're at an excavation site. Barcelona is named after the Roman um, fort that was there. There's a little history lesson and then they're excavating it. So I'm like... But he's going to give all his money away. But what about this archaeological team that's excavating? Like, do they? They don't get paid anymore. They don't get paid anymore? Not anymore. But it's also weird because the excavation site then also has his, like, family portraits all over it. it I don't understand. Yeah. It didn't matter. They're also in Barcelona. Uh-oh. I said same place as AT. <laughs> uh, and also, Joe is there. Because Santiago is there. And, you know, they're working together. Didn't Sa- Santiago heard that Sully was here. Yeah. So... Joe should look into it. And then we are back at Chloe's place. She says she found the cross in Genoa. And then Sully offered her 50k for it, which I'm like, that's a lot of money. And then she found out that it was worth more. Mm. We have the toast that they make. Uh, arriba, abajo, al centro, which is glasses up, glasses down, and glasses all around yes uh el centro <laughs> actually... e pie dentro oh, so in this uh, wishes health and drink uh and then drink your drink it's a tequila toast okay why is it specifically tequila because it's who made these rules i don't know that's it's known as the tequila toast this is weird why is that why so, is that a thing is there like arriba a abajo a centro e pie dentro is there like a vodka toast in russian like <laughs> This usually is, all, is usually at most toasts are not your health. Mead toast. There's a bunch of Irish toast. So. Uh, Chloe you... figures out that Nate is Sam's brother. And Sully pretends to be passed out because they're drinking. And yeah, he pretends. He... He's like, I'm worried about my cat. The guy on <laughs> the, the guy app, app hasn't texted, hasn't texted me back yet. He's supposed to feed him. But he's faking. He's yeah. Faking. Uh, as Nate's talking to... Uh, Chloe on the balcony. Chloe. He goes into Nate's stuff and looks at his postcards. And this doesn't really happen in the movie. 
No. They're not talking. And there's no balcony. Mm -mm. But this apartment has a balcony in the book. And they are flirting. And wild. Yeah, they, Nate and Chloe want a bone, but uh, yeah, sex no. complicates things. So separate bedrooms it is. So while they're flirting on the balcony, Sully wakes up and uh, peeps through Nate's backpack. And he gets nothing. <laughs> nothing out of that. Mm -hmm. So, um... But he brought the postcards, and that'll be important later. Oh, yeah, they were gonna bone, but then the mood was killed when she asked about his necklace, and Nate was honest, saying that Sam gave it to him, and then um, Chloe knows Sam, so she's like, oh, I don't want to have sex with him anymore. I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to bed. Good night. <laughs> you go to your room. I'll go to my room. Mm -hmm. Chapter 7. Santiago has his own father killed outside of La Sagrada Familia. Yeah, he talks with them. He's like, last chance, dad, to not give up your fortune. And the dad's like, F you, son. Doesn't matter. <laughs> and he gets in a car and then Joe kills him. And the drivers also. And then they, they like, push his body off so that way there can be, a, like, a public thing of, like, oh, no, he's oh, dead. my dad died. And then so he sad. also kills... Some known criminals to be like, oh, it was them. Yeah. And that. They felt so bad that they killed themselves. Or then they were fighting over his yeah, treasure something like that. or something like Him that. Him and his driver. I'm like, that sucks. Yeah. Okay, now we're back to A-Team. They're mm -hmm. going into the church. Yeah, Sully warns Nate about against Chloe. And uh, Sully says, I'm not jealous. I'm greedy. So is she. So is everyone. Never forget that. So he, like, straight up tells him, like, don't Do trust anyone. Do not trust anyone. Or sleep with her. <laughs> um, and he also says gold is why Sam doesn't call anymore. So he's like, even your brother has been caught by this. To he's be not wrong. Yeah, he's not wrong. Uh, and they're looking around the church, and then Nate noticed that there's a postcard, and it's the same postcard that Sam sent him. So Sam was here. Yep. And then Sully finds... Uh, Totally moves a pew. Carve into a rock. JSE, which literally could be anyone, but they're like, hey, he yeah. has these initials. Yeah. And there's these like stare things, which when we're watching the movie and all their clues, I'm like, I would have never figured that he out. He just traced a thing on the ground and he was like, and these are stairs. That this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, sure. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Calium is heaven, and so trust your fellow man. One goes to heaven and the other goes to hell. Which also is funny because they're like, obviously they're two, cro they're two crosses. The 18 didn't trust each other, but yet they devised this whole plan so you would have to work with someone else. Weird. Yeah. There's like, this treasure's never getting found. And, uh, Nate touches something and Mary picture pivots. The keyholes are found and turned clockwise because Sully's an idiot and can't find it in the journal, and so they almost die. Yeah, he can't. He doesn't even try to find it. He pretends that it's he in like there. opens it up immediately and is like, "Oh, it's clockwise. It's never clockwise. It's always counterclockwise." Clockwise, you guys. And then they almost right, die. Righty tidy, lefty Lucy. Come on. And then he's like, "What?" The, and he's like, "I actually didn't read it. Just pull it the other way." It was a 50-50 chance. And Sully's <laughs> such a dick. So it opens a passage I like in where... the movie, he's like, I didn't bring my glasses. <laughs> you <didn't> even try. <laughs> it's like freaking worse. So we have two passages. So now we're splitting up the team. Chloe and Nate are going to go to hell where Sully goes up to heaven. Nate pulls out a, uh, the GPS on his phone to put on Sully's phone. Why do you have so many apps open? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Sully's going Now they upstairs. can track each other. Uh, I'm surprised the reception didn't dip underneath the city, but whatever. I know, they yeah. have amazing cell phones. Amazing service. phones. Uh, Braddock is watching uh, the, a smuggler's house that she's like, hey, this guy will probably know Sully. And then she gets a text where Sully is. Yep. And I thought they were going to use the GPS app he just installed. Which would have been. Which would have been smart. Yeah. But whatever, you know. They spot Sully. Nate and Chloe are in the tunnel. Nate goes the wrong way because he's like, oh, there's an arrow pointing this way. And Chloe's like, no, it's this way. And so he almost gets kebobbed. He decides, oh, yeah, you're always the right way. We hear Chloe's backstory, which is not canon. Um, Do you think this whole thing is canon, though? Like, this thing is obviously yeah. not canon. This is a I mean, anything alternate could be canon dimension. Could be there's no way that this whole thing is canon. Something should be canon. Though. No, because then it, it it's different yeah. than the games. Everything in the game is its own canon, and everything in the book is its own canon, and everything in the movies is its own canon. So Chloe, as a child, found a statue under a bridge with jewels on it. She gave it to her dad. Her dad sold it and left her and her family. Yep. 
sad. And that's her backstory. And now she just can't stop finding treasure, yeah. causing problems. She's like, I loved it when I found treasure and then my dad left. <laughs> it was the best. So I can't wait to do it again. Obviously, when my, when my dad sold the treasure, he turned into a better guy. So I should just do Yeah, in the thing. game, her dad was an archaeologist and he worked for the Indian government. Um, you get this in the um, Chloe and Nadine adventures. And he ends up getting killed. That makes sense. But she like he leaves. He sends her and her mom to Australia because they're from India, and um, that's why she's got the Australian accent because she grew up in Australia. Also, Nolan North can do a pretty good Australian accent. And um, you find out what happens to him in the Lost Legacy, which is because indefinitely in this interpretation of events, Chloe's just in it for freaking money. Yeah, she's not like I love history. Teehee, I love archaeology. It's like, I'm just in it for the cash. Well, when you first meet Chloe, she's just in it for the money. And then you get, you find out a little bit more about her as the game's going. Chloe first makes her appearance in the second Nathan Drake game. Um, So, Chloe and Nate end up stumbling on an underground club. Sully's following the GPS dot on the streets. Um, they're looking at the pillars in the club, Nate and Chloe, and Infernium, which is hell. Yeah, they see a mosaic behind the bar, and they're like, okay, we gotta get behind the bar somehow. But then, uh, Joe's goons show up at the club. The Scottish guy is there. And so is the MMA guy. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, so as a distraction, he lights the bar on he fire. He lights the bar on fire. I like how they're like, quick, we should dance to blend in. But then they <laughs> dance for like two seconds before mm-hmm. they decide to just drop alcohol and light the bar on fire. And it worked. And then Nate's like, I'm going to create a distraction. You solve the puzzle. So he's like doing his... He's pretending to be a bartender. Fancy bartender thing. Then he gets in a bar fight and hits the and guy with the bottles. Work. Yeah. Chloe is trying to get all these stickers off the mosaic. She's like, I don't understand. Um, And then he's... Again, trying to use the lighter to to spit fire. It's not working very it's well. It's not working. So he's in a bar fight. That's a pretty good distraction. Uh, Chloe manages to solve the puzzle. She opens a little hole in the bar. They jump in. There's a tiny little passage. They jump in and then uh, he closes it behind him. He like pulls out the keyhole, yeah. right? It's like a dumb waiter. And then uh, jumps in to this very, very tiny, tiny little dumb waiter. Um, this is also caused, uh, they, they move on, right? And then the water is filling up the room. Water's filling up the room. And they're like, Sully, we need you to find where we are, where we're at and figure out the puzzle up there. And, uh, it's chapter nine. Yeah. Chapter nine switches to Sully. Uh, he's looking at the dot of the GPS and he's like, there's a bank. No, it's a pizzeria. And he's in a Papa John's. Yep. And there is a mosaic behind a plate glass. Yeah, I was confused in the book. It says mirror. I have mirror. I thought it was just like behind the a wall and a chair and a thing and I don't know. No, so it's like what it looked you like would use to me that in, as my, in my mind. They, they like framed yeah. the lock. Uh, but it's actually in the movie. It's like a big wall with the mosaic in the back. Because it's an archaeological find. But they're like, oh, we need it for the pizzeria too. So Looks fancy in this pizzeria. Uh, there's a god figure spitting water into a fountain. And it's behind a plate of glass. So he tries to bust it, but he's not succeeding. He's hitting it with a chair. He's causing a scene at mm-hmm. this Papa John's. And Joe is behind him with a gun. Yeah. They uh, fight. Sully throws her into the wall and it breaks. And, and he he's... manages to take her gun. Yeah. Uh, and he doesn't kill her. He just uses it to break the glass, which is honestly a smart mm-hmm. move. Then he's able to turn the key. Chapter 10. Nate and... Um, said Nate and Sully. Nate and Chloe almost drown. Uh, but they don't. No. They he continue down. Uh, yeah, uh, Chloe almost dies, but... She I doesn't. like how um, Nate... No, they're like, hey, Sully, you have to follow our GPS. And Sully's like, I have to cross traffic. <laughs> oh, I can't believe this. After what just happened in the pizzeria. I know. It's like... Throwing people around. Man... Um, they're continuing down a spider webbed tunnel. Sully struggles to follow up top in the end. 
uh, the keyhole, but the keys don't work. Sully tries to open the grate to get into where they're at. He looks at a well and there's some more symbols that again, he's like, oh, the keys have to I be fitted together. Out. I'm like, I would have never in a million years have gotten that from that image. So he throws the keys down to Nate. Um, Chloe says he'd rather lose the gold than trust in us. Nate fits the keys together and turns the lock. Okay, so they're in a sewer, right? And I wrote, the fact that the sewer was built down there and no one found this treasure room yet is amazing. Or behind the bar, like nobody... Yeah, no one was like, hmm, nobody... look at this night's mosaic. Nobody, like, exploded it, blew it up, we're in the no. sewer. Try to preserve our historical past and not blow it up, which is not true at it's all. It's not but... true. We we blow up our historical past all the time. Yes, and it is literally it's like all. A, it's like people's Europe. hobbies back then. That's why, like Just archaeological digs, you. I mean, things are often built on top of other things, but you you don't get to preserve it forever. You dig, and then that's a farmer's field. They need to plant stuff on it later. So there's never any money for these archaeological digs either. So you have like a year, maybe of funding, and then tough shit. Yeah. Anyway, uncharted logic doesn't matter. Mm-mm. Now we're chapter um, 11. With the team enters a Roman storehouse, there's four giant urns in the center. I thought these were smaller. The movie made them look freaking huge. Yeah, because Nate's got to push Chloe up there, and then they crack and spill open salt. Bunch of salt. And then it br- breaks all the other urns, which they're, like, right next to the urns when the urns explode. And pressurized salt is actually, like, somewhat acidic if you watch The Mummy. They're getting salt in their eyes yeah. for sure. And salt also in Roman times super valuable is what Which they is used why to pay soldiers. I thought they were just gonna get spices. They're yeah. like, oh, they're treasure, and it would just be like spices. Yeah. And they'd get their comeuppance that way. Uh treasure's not here in the salt though, there's a scroll. It's a map to actually where the treasure is. It's to the spice island. Moluccus, yeah, the spice islands in the Philippines. Chloe points a gun at Nate. Crushes her earpiece and is like, give it to me. And Sully's like, I'm almost there. And chapter 12, Chloe pistol whips Nate and steals his I'm not getting screwed out of this one. Not before telling Nate to ask Sully about Sam, which is what he does when Sully finally gets down there. Yeah, because Chloe takes the map and dips. She knocks out Nate. Sully runs into Braddock. Yeah, Joe's also down there. Tries to shoot him. Jumps out of sight. Sully falls, falls through a hole in the ground. Yeah, Sully wakes him up. And Nate's like, what happened to my brother? What happened to my brother? I mean, <laughs> after waking up. Sam's gone. He's lost, but he's not gone. No, he's gone because sh- I don't know what I was trying to try to say there. Braddock shot him. <laughs> yes, Braddock shot him. He's like, he. Yeah, I said he ghosts me. It's not technically true. He is a ghost. He's dead. Uh, <laughs> killed by Joe and her goons. And, uh, and Sully just left him there to die. He only brought Nate along because he thought Nate knew what the final piece of the puzzle was because Sam knew and Sam talked about Nate a lot. Which we talked about this when we watched the movie. Like he tries to ghost Nate at the auction house. So yeah. if he knew something, he wasn't going to find that out like really early on in this thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what Sully's plan was. He just needed another dude to to get arrested, I mm. guess. Distraction. Yeah. I need someone to cut the power so I can steal this thing. Nate's pissed, calls Sully a shitty person, and leaves. Uh, chapter 13, plot twist. Chloe is working for Santiago Moncada the whole time. Yep. they were. She was hired the same time Joe was. Mm-hmm. Joe does not take that news lightly, but she can't do anything about it, so... Yep. Chloe's in charge now. Yep. And Moncada has the map. Nate and Sully go back to Chloe's apartment to sleep. Well, yeah, I get their stuff. Yeah. Uh, when they woke, Sully is like, I figured it out. Chloe's working for Santiago. Do you, don't you want to kill Joe for killing your brother, huh, punk? And Nate's like, stop trying to convince me to join you. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to join you. Yeah. But we're business partners. And we're not from friends. now on, it's 50-50. Yeah. Chloe is on the cargo plane. She's the one that's checking all the lists twice, um, but she feels really uneasy about Braddock. Yeah, she's like, why are all these mercs? We're just going to a small island, but whatever. Nate and Sully show up at the airstrip. Uh, In the Globemaster Command, uh, they're looking at the map. Um, DMAR is the closest fit. 
Calle del Oro, which is the Golden Cave, which I don't think is an actual place. I tried to look it up, and I couldn't. I don't think this is an actual place. Santiago uh, is also bringing his lucky car with him. Mm-hmm, which is a good spot for Nate and Sully to hide. They have to cuddle together for I hours. didn't realize they were hiding in the trunk until the movie. I didn't know where they were hiding. I thought mm-hmm. they were hiding in a box. Well, something. that's what it says. They snuck into the plane. They're in a really tight space. I don't think they tell you that until they get like out of it. Yeah, they don't specify. I didn't know where they were hiding. Mm-hmm. Uh, chapter 15. They are about to land. Mankato does his speech... Yeah, time to bring back my family fortune. Mm-hmm. And then he, like, shares the drink around and he motions, in the book, he motions um, Joe to refill his glass. And Joe's like, that's it. I'm done with this guy. And Jeez. then kills him. Well, it's his throat. The but house of Mankata dies with She just you. does it. She's, yeah. she's, it's, it wasn't like a pent-up thing. Because you can hear her internal thoughts in the in the yeah. book. So she's you like, can tell that guy. she's tired of his shit. But in the movie, it just kind of happens. She just starts the dr- to dr- The drink finally makes it all the way. Because it's so dumb because he pours himself a glass, but he passes the bottle around for everyone else to drink out of. He only brought so many peasant. glasses. Yeah. Well, in the movie, he's the only one with a glass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and everyone else has to drink out of the bottle. Yeah, I thought he was definitely going to drink it all. And then when it gets to her, he's going to be like, pour me some more and stuff like that. But mm. no, nope. She just shuts his throat. Um, Chloe disappears also at this time. She's hiding because she's like, what the crap? Yeah. Uh, Nate hears the ramp opening on the plane and they get out of the trunk. Sully's yeah, plan. Their plan is to steal the map and then dip. Yep. <laughs> and hide again until the plane leaves. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're over Papua New Guinea. Uh, and I like how they all just left the map. On the table where Mankata's dead on the floor. Like, no one's like, oh, maybe we should put pack this map up. We're no gonna need it. No one saw Sully and Nate, like, walk in there either. They all went out to the cargo thing to drop the stuff, I guess. I don't know what they're doing. Well, I think Chloe presses the button to make it seem like she jumped out of the plane. But she doesn't. But she doesn't. But in the movie... Yeah. The freaking goons open the thing. For They're like, way. open the thing just for funsies. I and guess. then we're going to go have a drink. And then we're going to go have a drink. Uh, so that was weird. Um, Sully has the map. Better find a parachute because now we're not. Now that there's a dead guy, we're not waiting around. Yeah, now that Joe's in charge, mm-hmm. we're not hanging out anymore. Braddock and company are still looking for Chloe. And they're letting the crates drop out of the plane. Um, Chloe also, this is different in the book versus the movie. Like, Chloe, it shows Chloe getting grabbed by a gross dude. Yeah, she's, uh, yeah, she was hiding, uh, Nate and Sully find Paris. She's on chapter 16. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nate sees Joe. Hey, did you kill my brother? Like, I'm gonna get her. <laughs> Sully's like, don't do it. Sully then leaves Nate again. I like, He's yeah. like, peace out. <laughs> yeah, but in the, in the movie, he's just like... All right, bye. Good luck. Because <laughs> hey, Joe wasn't going to shoot Nate. She was like, hold up. And then when she sees Sully. She's going to shoot that man. She's face. like, shoot the, shoot him. Um, no more second chances, Sully. Every time I see you, I'm going to just shoot at you. Yeah, the mercs start shooting. A bunch of crates fall out. Something heavy hits the back of Nate's head. Yeah, the the crates are still like tied to the plane, though. So they're like shooting off all over the so place. So while they're like, shooting Nate. Chloe is in a box until she hears Nate yelling. And then she's like, is that Nate yelling? Mm-hmm. And then she gets caught by some mercs, but overpowers them and steals their guns. This is chapter 17. Yeah. She gets in a shootout with Joe until she lights some of the cargo on fire and then gets in Santiago's lucky car. Well, uh, so she also, Paolo is the gross guy that finds her. She gets away with the gun. You wrote his name down? Yeah, it was gross Paolo. Yeah, but who cares? <laughs> I was like, this uh, guy's dead. So she drives. Okay, so Chloe needs a parachute. And I swear that the car, I swear it said the car had a parachute. I didn't write it down. So but um, she drives the car out. But then in, she runs into Nate, which is the beginning of the book. Yeah. I'm um, glad they don't reiterate And the movie. I thought they were going to, like, redo the, the chapter we read, the prologue. Yeah. They didn't. They just, they knew you knew what happened. Yeah. Um, they did it a little bit, but it was different shots. In the movie? Yeah. Yeah, it was different shots, so it was okay. They would cut back to Chloe shooting people instead of just Nate shenanigans. But then, so now they have to exit the car and, like, 
free dive. Her, her plan was to grab a crate, pull the crate's parachute, and ride the parachute. And ride in. the parachute in. So both of them grab a crate. So Nate's parachute. struggling because he just goes right past it, and he's struggling to catch on a crate. Uh, the airdrop was a failure, but Braddock don't care because um, she's gonna land. And she says Sully was the real issue. Nate and Chloe finally grab onto the crate with the parachute and they drop into the ocean and they're drifting around. And they're on the box. They have a little chat about what happened. And then they see a Chloe's resort. Chloe's just being a straight dick. Yeah. She's like, I'm not going to say I'm sorry. And Nate's like, I didn't even say anything. Yeah. I didn't even talk to you. He's okay. trying not to talk to her because he's pissed. Yeah, of course he's pissed. But then they find a luxury resort. Mm-hmm. And then we see a man in yeah. cargo shorts. Okay. I knew this was going to be Nolan North in the book. I was like, this is the cameo. I can't believe S.D. Perry wrote this in. It's in the script. Yeah, but it's so random. Do whatever you want. He's I'm like, yeah, author. we fell out of a car and a plane and crashed the ocean. He's like, oh, something, something like that happened to me once. It happened to me once. Teehee. And anyway, they got a room under Sully's name. Yeah, because Nate, Nate stole Sully's, Sully's money clip. Uh, uh, I know they make a reference to it in the movie very, very quickly. Oh, yeah, when he's like, thank he's you, like, Mr. Sullivan. He's like, call me call Victor. Me Victor. He's like, what? We were in a car together. I was bored. Mm-hmm. Um, Chloe asks for a printer. She's going to print some pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, they also give her them a cell phone recovery kit. For yeah, their phone. very nice. And then also Nate's gross gum has to sit out. Um, so they Don't are on bubble yum at the resort. The, I know they could have just gotten new they gum. Just got new gum. They are on Timor Lestate, which is an actual island, and then they uh... they hang out on the balcony again, and then they make out, and then they bone. Mm-hmm. They don't do this in the movie. <laughs> they don't. And there's a quote that says, "Business first, you nymph." <laughs> you nymph. Cl- Chloe is talking about herself. Yeah. Oh, nymph. I mean, it's... nymphomaniac. Yeah. God, it's so gross though, because they talk about how good the sex is like a lot, a lot, and then also Nate being like, "I want to lick her body," and I'm like, "Gross, dude!" <laughs> it's also how like sore do your does your body well, actually that's have the whole to... sex scene? They got like, like they start out, out the sex scene where they're like, and then we jump on each other, but ouchie, my ribs were broken. No, no, no. Ouchie, I have a cut. I didn't realize I had a cut there until like we tried to. They bone. were already in the ocean though. I think and you would know work, that from the but, yeah. salt water. Um, so she prints the map. It's uh, to scale, which is important. Um, there's an X uh, marks the spot on the map, but that has to be a misdirect because what kind of pirate puts an X on a map? Nate knows that the final clue is on one of his postcards. So they look at the postcards. Uh, uh, Chloe just goes to bed. She gives up. Yeah. Like, go they try to figure out the postcards. We're on chapter 19 now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chloe goes to bed. Drake figures it out. Uh, it's the same trick from the beginning. He's got a light behind the... Invisible ink. The Still, his lighter doesn't work. Yes. <laughs> Add heat. Keys are the key. His zippo still does not work. Uh, and he chews his sea gum. The keys are your compass. Mm-hmm. That's what the note says. Um, and so he has to use the keys together as a coordinate thing. He, like, puts them in the two spots, mm-hmm. connects them whatever he writes down the coordinates and then he goes to sleep but he writes down fake coordinates coordinates. for chloe but i like how sd perry kept us in suspense yeah you know right he's like uh i trust her enough and he writes stuff down and then you know chloe wakes up first and she's like i'm gonna ditch him i have the coordinates and then uh, like chapter 20 is when we find out that when nate wakes up and he saw it's like chloe's gone with the note and uh he so hit it on the bottom of the, the chair. chair. Nate's like, oops, I put the wrong coordinates down. So, you know, it left you in suspense. It was so, it's interesting because in the book, he hides it under the table. But in the movie, it's wrapped up in a thing on a, one of the bottles on yeah. the table. So it's hidden kind of in plain sight. That'd been weird. Um, Braddock's in New Guinea. She takes the Victoria, which was the same as Magellan's boat that survived, but that wasn't important enough to make it in the movie. Uh, they do say the Victoria, and yeah. she ends up bribing the, right? She bribes the... All I have is Joe arrived at the location. Captain. Joe well, is here now. they're using all of the dude's stuff, but he's dead, but they're not telling them that he's dead. Uh, Nate takes a boat. It's 21. Uh, before that, in 20, oh, there's their Easter oh, egg. Drake oh. has a dream. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that he met Sully when he was, like, 14 in Columbia, and that he hung out with Sam, and he met Chloe at a different point, so it's Yeah, basically weird Easter egg, but okay, weird Easter egg. sure. Um, he was right not to trust her, and he goes to his chartered boat with the right. So he chartered a boat. You know what's funny the... about the book versus the movie? In the movie, uh, you know, when he tricks her and is like, give you the wrong coordinates, mm-hmm. you know, biatch. Yeah. <laughs> like, basically, he is, like, kind of happy about yeah, it. Yeah, he smiles. He's like, I the did movie, the right thing. But in the movie, he's so somber. He's like, oh, man, I was hoping that she wouldn't just That we would have me. sex again this morning. That yeah. we, like, bone again, but, like, whatever. I'm sad now. We'll just take a boat. Uh, oh, good thing I chartered that boat. Yeah. Uh, everybody's looking for the gold, but in the wrong places. Braddock sees a boat and decides to follow it. So this was interesting because in the movie, you, it's Nate that you see and she sees him and she's like, yeah. let's follow him. But in the book, you find out later that she's actually following Sully. Which makes sense because that's all she cares about. When she yeah. sees Sully, she gets dumb as hell and mad. Mm-hmm. Like, she could have made it out of here, but the fact that she was just so mad at Sully... Is the reason that she failed. Yep. Uh, Nate follows the coordinates and it brings him to, I want to say it's like a, co- yeah, like that was kind of a hard rocky thing. Rocky island. Yeah. And, but then he sees these bioluminescent things below and he's like, oh, let me dive under. Yeah. And, he He's worried because he's like, oh, this is, this is worms are going to kill me. But he couldn't wait. He's too yep. impatient. He's like, I'm just going to go for it. So, um, he dives under, makes it, and he finds two Spanish Carox, which apparently is not the correct type of boat, I guess. That was something I read about when I was reading about stuff about the movie. Oh. Wrong time period. Um, Conception and the Trinidad. And I'm like, how does Nate know how to drive a boat? He does, oh. He charters his own boat and he drives a boat. It's not that hard to drive a boat. Have you taken boat class lessons? It's like no. the easy you can do it online. It's so easy. I mean, I've get, been on boats. You can but... get your boat license super easy. Mm. He could probably he probably did it in the hotel. Like on his screw phone, it. Yeah. yeah, on his phone. It's so easy to drive a boat. It takes like zero training. But that's kind of <laughs> my one of my biggest pet peeves about this. I'm like, how does Nate know how to do anything? Because okay. he's just a bartender who steals stuff. I know I bitched about this during the movie. Yeah. But like in any media where you have a person who can just, like, I know how to use every gun and a sword and how to combat, I just, I'm just so tired of being sad about that. Just accept that everyone can do everything all the time. You, too, can just pick up a gun and use it. <laughs> you can drive a boat. You can do I mean, you can do it, but not very well. You set your mind to. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You can fight professional mercs. <laughs> you know? You can do it. Yeah. You're a little scrappy, right? You're a little scrappy guy. I can pull myself up and over on a you decomposing climb, yeah, 100%, boat. Hundred <laughs> percent. You don't even need to climb rope. You can just do it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna pull myself You're an through hero. the can. <laughs> if movies taught me anything, basic Joe Schmo can be an action hero. Mm-hmm. You can be an action hero. Everyone can be an action hero. You just gotta be a little scrappy. You can do it. All right. So now we're on 22. Nate climbs. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, we actually see that Chloe's on the other side of the same island that Braddock's mm-hmm. on. Yeah, because everyone's looking for it. In the book, they actually follow Chloe, unlike the movie, on her boat. Mm -hmm. And she's, you know, digging. Yeah, because she's like, these are the coordinates that has to be here on this flat island. Yeah, in the movie, you don't want, you don't see Chloe until like the end. You see her like in the boat going, but she's like on a boat the whole time. Yeah. So she's, she's digging now. Um, so Matt, Cl- Matt, Nate climbs, he's on the Conception, which is the smaller of the two boats. He um, finds Magellan's stamp. He goes to the captain's chambers and he finds the manifest and the letter opener and the seal. Nate hears a splash, but then he's like, whatever, that's weird. Um, he, he goes of- into the hold instead of investigating like, oh, did someone follow me? Because he just left his boat out there. He doesn't believe anyone's following him. He um, finds a barrel of cloves. Mm-hmm. That's all the spices. Then Sully spice. appears with a spice fun fact. You know, I liked in the movie, it actually looked like he spooked him. Mm-hmm. He did a good job at acting like he was like, oh, yeah. oh my God. There's a person talking <laughs> behind me. All right. And then, of course, Sully has all those apps open and he's been following Nate this whole time on his GPS. Yep. I like how he just, Sully landed and then he's like, Nate's going to get out of this. I'm yeah. just going to wait. I'm going to get a boat. I'm going to wait. Mm-hmm. 
and the gold is actually under all the spices in the barrels although i to your point it would have made more sense if the if the treasure was actually the spices yeah because then that also would have made more sense for them to take the boats out altogether. yeah and then the boats would be the only thing that's worth money yeah. And that rum <laughs> that they're going to get to later. And then this is where we get, I wanted to do this with my brother, Sam, not you. Yes. Yeah, so Sully, Sully keeps tipping over barrels and is like, gold, we did it, kid. And Nate's like, nah, you suck. You didn't yeah. do nothing. It was me and Sam. Me and Sam did everything. And then boom. Oh, I also liked in the movie, uh, Sully tries to hug Nate <laughs> and Nate's like, get off me. You didn't do anything. You're the worst. I yeah. hate you. And then explosion. Mm -hmm. There's actually, I don't think there was an explosion no. in the movie. Dude, they just show they up just on the They just show up. But in the, yeah, in the movie, Joe and her goons explode. Blowing the, everything up. Which makes sense, you know? Yeah. You know the Also, I'm like, how villain? did those boats get in there in the first place? I don't I'm not gonna worry about it. In the Goonies, right, where you have the same thing. The Yeah, boats... the realistic Goonies. You <laughs> With know? The yeah, a hundred percent real realism. But there was here. a cave in and like that makes sense. Like I you put the and then you cave in. that also I don't know how to tell you this. But no, because that's these are fake. <laughs> From Movies Uncharted 4, real. it's the same boat, Uncharted stupid thing. Fake. And but there was a secret cove that they had. Uh, t t they couldn't get the boats out because they. Um, I love when Avery like, try to make this realistic. You ever see sci-fi and they try to explain things in their techno babble and they're like this. this well, we can get some of our you. technology stuff this from sci-fi. So. You. All right, so Braddock's there. The Darby. team's all there except for Chloe. She's still digging somewhere. Um, She's still digging with her hands. <laughs> Braddock shoots her way in. Uh, they are going to lift the boats out, and that's I'm like, how did they get there in the first place? But apparently not relevant. Nate and Sully hide in the secret rum compartment, and of course, while they're in there, they're going to drink the rum. Gross. <laughs> I don't know. Probably tastes good. Probably tastes like sugar. So now we are on chapter twenty four. I like how Nate knew there was a secret compartment with rum. Because his brother told him that. Yeah. He's like, my brother told me all about these boats. It's Smuggler's Den. Braddock you know, is having... I do like in the in this that they hide. They're like, these <laughs> we're not fighting these you marks, know. dude. We are freaking hiding. Uh, and in the game, you would just shoot the shit out of them. <laughs> I uh, know in the fourth game you have to sneak aboard too. Okay. You you avoid the mercs, and that's when you Good. find out that uh, Nadine loses her company because they they're, turn on her. They're probably because uh, you're listening. They're and then probably you swim hearing on the, boat. the critique of that Ludo narrative dissonance because mm. when everyone talks about it, they immediately go to Uncharted, and I think that's a little bit unfair to Uncharted. I think games some other games do it way worse than Uncharted. I can believe Nate's a little little skeevy murderer guy. <laughs> Nate does kill a lot of people. I can believe it. Like, I don't believe there's little narrative dissonance. I always thought he was a jerk. Mm. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, 24. 24? Yeah. Braddock no, is... No, I'm 23. <laughs> no? You're right, Marvel. Uh Braddock's having <laughs> trouble bribing all the people that she needs to, um, but she's confident uh, that she can. Um, Helicopters are coming to pick up yeah. those ships. They still can't find Nate and Sully. Um... They're going to wait it. Sully, Nate and Sully are going to wait it out. Um, Nate hates that Braddock is going to get the gold since she, but she has the equipment and like, those, I'm like, she has people. Like, yeah. I don't know what you were thinking and you were just going to find this whole thing of gold and like take it out one by one, like on well, that little tiny when boat. Joe and the goons show up. They're like, okay, well, they're probably going to like go get equipment and then come back. So yeah. we'll just like bag some gold and then take our ships and leave. But then they pick up the ship with the helicopter, and then uh, Nate and Sully are like, well, I guess we're not getting out of this I like the, the ship moves, and they're like, the fuck? Yeah, and they're like, the hell? I guess we're not going to do that. That was the that line. Plan. That was the direct quote from the book, by the way. Uh, they look for... They're like, I guess we're fighting these mercs Weapons, now. yeah. And they're like, there's this cutlass. Yeah, we're going to fight them with cutlasses, I guess. And then Sully fills his backpack with gold... They and say then, that they're gonna try to get the helicopter guy to switch sides. Was that a snide comment that they were just gonna kill him? Because mm -hmm. I wasn't sure. I was like, are they actually gonna try to charisma their yeah. way? Like, look. There's no charisma. <laughs> There's no charisma. You have uh, zero char they think they have charisma. I like the the line is like, "You up for a mutiny?" <laughs> yeah. Let's take over. Uh, Nate and Sully take out two mercs. They just throw them over the railings, mm -hmm. really. Uh, I don't think because in the book, Nate's like, "I really don't want to stab this guy." Yeah. 
So I'm just going to push him over the railing. Just push him over. As long as he dies, like, on accident, even though it was totally my fault because I pushed him, <laughs> I'll feel less guilty about it. They take out the other two. Sully now has a gun. Um, and then he's got to go hijack the hel- the hollow, the helicopter. Sully's using his backpack full of gold to, yeah, like, hit, to hit people, people in the face. Um, they, it, Sully hasn't flown in years, but he's climbing with his backpack full of gold, which is heavy, which is weighing him down. Nate is Wait, playing around on the boat. Built. Yeah. It's Marky Mark Marks in the Punky Bunch. In the Punky Bunch is pretty built. He works out. He, like, wakes up at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning to work out every day. Yeah, but Sully doesn't look like the type to do that. No. That's for sure. But whatever. Maybe I just don't know. I don't mm-hmm. understand Sully. Um, an injured Mark. So, Nate's playing around as, like, boat captain. He's, like, turning the wheel and stuff. And an injured Mark climbs back up, uh, and they have a cutlass fight. Sully's in the cabin fighting with the pilot. The ship dips. Uh, I'm taking off with your gold. What are you doing, Braddock? Uh, so he's uh, uh, in communication with Braddock through the speakers because he's flying away. Yeah, and in the movie he just doesn't talk mm-hmm. to her. So no, he he does, and no, that's what I she... thought he like does the little kissy oh. face because she's like pilot. Oh, what yeah. are you doing? And then she looks through a little spyglass, and then he just gives the kiss. But in the book, he actually like calls back in the communications. Braddock, instead of landing the one ship that she's on, because they're like super close to the boat, she's like, no, take gonna off. Kill this guy. I'm going to kill this guy. Uh, the Trinidad gets closer, and so does Braddock. Nate's going to try to use the 100 year old cannon. I like how they call it a stage flight. We've got a stage five clinger here. It's a wedding yeah, crash reference. Yeah, plan is to like crash the ships. Mm hmm. She's going to crash her ship into that ship and then board that ship. Well, her boat's bigger. But you're crushing the billion dollar boats. Mm-hmm. The boats themselves are worth something. Yeah, and on their so own. they crash the boats and then the gold is falling into the sea yeah. from her boat, I think. And then um, Chloe is getting all this gold falling. It cl- it's falling on her island because she's been digging all these holes. She hears the choppers. She sees the gold fall. And she's like, great. And she grabs. She starts picking it all she's up. She's like, maybe I'll snorkel. There's snorkel equipment in my boat. Uh, so Chloe gets away with some of the gold. Yeah. Which is she does not deserve. Uh, and he's fighting one of Joe's main mercs. The MMA guard. Both almost fall off the boat. Uh, the guy who was fighting gets wiped off the ship by rocks question mark yeah and the movie was better this was kind of confusing because it looks like you know he was like fighting the dude and then he sees the rocks coming Mm -hmm. and he's like look rocks and the mma guy's like i'm not falling for that one and then he turns around actually anyway and he's like oh that's a rock and he gets hit by a rock and falls off uh sully tries to make a deal with braddock he's like i'll take my ship you take yours and she says great deal the only thing I want more than the gold, Victor, is for you to have none of it. That's so dumb. So she's going to ram the ships again. Mm-hmm. And Nate's like, I'm going to shoot a cannonball at the helicopter. And it worked. The Scotsman is in is the co-pilot chair. So he's the one. They're going to ram us. Nate uh, loads the cannon and gets a shot at his Zippo. Actually works this time. Finally. Do you imagine if it didn't work this whole time? Mm. Then it'd be there'd be a so. useless story. You should mechanic. just threw it at someone just like at some brother. point. <laughs> just like my brother. <laughs> uh, Braddock like... jumps off onto the other ship because the cannon hits the helicopter, and of course that ship no more. That was kind of cool though. I like the uh, airship fights. Yeah, definitely. When reading this, I was like, oh yeah, this is definitely a movie. Although. When also while reading it, I was like, man, I wish this was an actual Uncharted game. Because that sounds sick. Yeah, that doesn't... There is a bunch of stuff in 4 with boats. Could you imagine in, like, an air fight? In and you have like to, that. like... You have Nathan Drake, like, tumbling around, like, having he, to fight. He would just break everything. Uh, Everything's breaking, mm-hmm. and then you have to cannonball. That sounds like a quick time event. I could see it. Yeah. I could see it. That sounds way cooler. I just want every movie to be a video game and not a movie. <laughs> interactive that's all i want i want to participate i hate being passive and just sitting here all right so her. braddock is now on the other and she uh she's at the capstan which holds the anchor in place and she just pulls that as she says if i lose so do you so the anchor now is in the water 
Nate's running for the copter, so the boat's getting dragged, which is causing Septic weight. break. Yeah. yeah. And, uh... So, Nate's running for the copter. Sully's bag of gold has fallen out of the cabin. Joe's slashing at him. With oh, my knife. God. Oh, my God. She says the most iconic villain line. She's like, say hi to your brother for me. Mm-hmm. But Nate kicks her overboard and says, I think you'll meet him sooner. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that doesn't happen in the movie, but my no, God. Does. does? Yeah. I didn't even hear it. I yeah. was like, God, that's such a line. That's such a dumb line. Because <laughs> yeah, she, she says, say hello to your brother. And he's like, you first. And then he like kicks her. Um, Braddock disappears overboard. Ship is about to fall. Braddock is now chasing Nate up the Crawling ship. Crawling back up like a spider. Dude, he moves way faster than he does. Yeah. Ship Sully puts it on autopilot because he's trying to save his gold. Sully gets the kid instead of the gold. Yeah, he had to choose his treasure bag or save Nate. And he saved Nate. So unsully of him. Braddock lands in the water. I'm alive. <laughs> and then the, and then ship, the ship falls, falls on her. <laughs> but she could still be alive, yeah. Uh, alive. There is a big military boat headed to the sinking boat's direction. Nate and Chloe see each other and she mouths well played Nate. Nate has gold in his pockets. Yeah, he's like three pieces of gold mm-hmm. that he managed to Sully's like, oh freaking excited. Yeah, Sully's got something. <laughs> and then he, you know, gives him his last bubble yum. And I like the the way he did it in the movie better. Where he's like, Aw, thanks, kid, and he throws it out the window. <laughs> Instead of in the in the uh book, he was just like he just immediately throws it out of the window. Mm. Like, I can't believe you made me think you had another piece of gold. Mm. You're the worst. Uh, chapter 30. We are now in Panama City sometime later. There is a guy with a black eye patch. He's known as Gage. It's classic villain name. Love that name. He Gage. has an old German map. Um, and he's going to exchange that for Sam's ring. There is an Easter egg in this chapter, too. Because Nate, before he meets with Gage, is reading an article by Elena Fisher. Oh, she sounds cool. She sounds so cool. That was not in the. Uh, that was not movie. in the movie. Um. So there's a German map. It's a Nazi map. Sully. Uh. They exchange for Sam's ring. Um. Sully comes in. He's like the guy with the mustache, and he's got a gun. And uh, Nate gives Sully Gage's cigar. Um, while he's doing that, he steals his ring back. And so now they have the map and the ring. In the movie, though, it, like, this scene comes after I, the epilogue. It comes and, after the credits thing, yeah. Yeah, it's mid-credits. And then they get stopped at the door and they're like, uh-oh. But then that's not really in the book. That's not really in so the So it sets it up for another movie. Yeah. But um, I have to say that Sully's mustache was really disappointing. It, it's not like it's the mustache in the game. It's small and creepy it's, when yeah. I need it to be big and bushy and old man-like. Mm-hmm. And also, they should have given him more salt and pepper hair. Yeah, he's like in the... I think he's supposed to try to look young. I don't want him to look young. Yeah, he should be. I want him to look old and dying. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he's got a pencil-thin mustache, which is, again, creepy. He's like... It's called Puberty Kid. You'll hit it soon. I want Sully to be movie. somebody else, but super old. And then in the next movie, Tom Holland is like, Sully, you look different. And he'll just be like, oh, well, that's what age does to you, kid. Oh, kid. <laughs> too old for this. Yeah. Um, that leads us to the epilogue. And this is Inmate 47. And mm-hmm. Inmate 47 is writing on postcards. He says the end. And, and I wrote, is that supposed to be Sam? Yeah, because he signs the postcard with S. I didn't so. get that. He's got a whole stack of postcards. I was like, Are you getting this? I was like, Damn. is this either Nate uh, just in jail, old, writing about his story, or is this Sam? Mm, might be like a Marco Polo thing. But uh, yeah, so that is the end of the Uncharted book and the Uncharted movie. Yep. So thank you for coming to our AV Book Club crossover. Cross- we crossed our... over with ourselves. <laughs> What are our we guest stars reading and watching next? Do we know? Oh, yeah. Um, next, I get to pick. <laughs> so I picked. God, I don't remember the name of it. Hang on, hang on. It's in. Can you give me that over there? It's in there. Is it this one? Yeah. Thanks. For January. Brandy and the Ink Machine: Dreams Come to Life. Is this a comic? And no, it's a book. It was an actual book. An original novel by uh, is it Andr- Andrine Cress? Oh, yep. Andrine. Andrine. Yeah, it's the first, the first Bendy novel. I'm really excited. You also get to choose our. uh... Yeah, and uh, you know what I'm making you watch? Our first TV show. 
I'm going to make you watch Sonic Prime. Oh. The new Sonic show that came out. Um, so look forward to that. So we're going to read some Benny and we're going to watch some Sonic. So join us at the, I guess, the end of January, right? End of January, yeah. Okay, bye!